What is up guys, Incente here, and I haven't put out a video in probably a week and a half. Uh, this is because I've been moving to a new apartment, um, but all moved in, new apartment, um, new ways of studying go, and I thought I would kick this off with a new series. Um, there's just a bit of exposition for this series, uh, so just, just bear with me. Um, so a lot of people have asked me, you know, can you do a life and death video? I'm thinking to myself, there is just, there is so much to learn through life and death that you need to sort of just experience by solving problems. It's not really sort of as much principle based as sort of discussing the opening or, you know, discussing different types of shape moves or whatever. Um, it's very situational. And a lot of the life and death uh, content out there uh, already has solutions that are there like on the computer, right? Recently, I found, and I put it on Reddit, if you guys haven't seen it on Reddit, um, this was like a week ago, over a week ago, I found a website that had PDFs called uh, of Cho Chi Kun's Encyclopedia of Life and Death. There were three volumes, uh, Elementary, Intermediate, Advanced, and these were amazing resources because they don't have the solutions and they're on paper. And I printed all of them out, made them into a binder book thing they're totally free and they have made me forced me to read has been great because a lot of times i kind of cheat i like half read it i'm like yeah this is fine and then i look at the solution not really exploring i've learned a lot from this life and death and so i wanted to sort of share it with you guys and so there's a lot of people that they don't enjoy not having solutions or they don't really have the time to like stare at a problem for 15 minutes or the desire to really start a problem for 15 minutes. I like this, it's like a puzzle solving thing, but people don't really like life and death. And like, that's a very personal thing. Everybody's different, right? So to accommodate the people that have a harder time studying life and death, I'm like, why don't I just solve this whole book and put the solutions online? So what I hope to have is an entire archive. Uh, each video will be 12 problems. Someone can go through and every day they'll just watch the next video in the set and they will go through all of Cho Chi Kun's Encyclopedia of Life and Death. We're going to start elementary, so the beginners can really get a sense of how to kill something. And eventually, as I make more videos, the problems will get harder. And not only will I give solutions, but if I get the wrong solution, someone will be able to catch me on it who's watching the video. Then I can make an edit, uh, put it in the description, and have an SGF file with the correct solution, since none exist right now. Uh, I think this will be a really cool idea, and I hope that beginners uh, can learn a lot from these initial videos, and I hope that intermediate and advanced players will eventually be able to learn uh, once we get into the harder problems. Okay, so just some suggestions on how to use this. Uh, there's going to be all 12 life and all 13 in this case, um, life and death problems are going to be shown uh, five seconds each in the beginning of the video. So right after I stop talking, then I'm going to go through each one and do the solutions. I recommend you pause the video at the time each one shows. Uh, figure out as best you can what the solution is, then just hit play, pause it at the next one, and go through. Of course, totally at liberty to just uh, listen to me, but this is really to train reading. So hopefully uh, you can you need to study this in the most correct way that you can. All right, so we're gonna start off really simple, really light, um, very easy here. So ignore the bottom, this was just scorekeeping. Just So the top left, it is always black to move. That's the other thing, it's always black to move. 
uh, how does black, in this case, kill white? Um, this is the most basic life and death problem you can probably think of. Uh, and so for the beginners, for people who are just introduced to life and death, uh, the idea is to keep your opponent from making two eyes. Now we can imagine if um, there was a white stone here, then black could not play in either of these places, right? Because as soon as he plays there, that stone has no liberty, so it's immediately taken off the board. Even if the entire thing was filled and black tries to play here, he still can't because black will have no liberties, white still has the one liberty over here, and he can't play two moves at once. So this is unconditionally alive. There are two rooms. White's group has made two rooms is what people call it. So that is the critical point. That is the point white needs to play to live. Likewise, if black wants to kill the group, he plays there. So if black plays here, this will kill the white group. You can notice that no matter, you know, white can't do anything to make two eyes anymore, right? White can capture the stone, that's great. But <clears throat> now black kills the entire thing because that is white's one liberty and he couldn't separate his uh, stones to make two rooms. All right, so here's the solution to the next problem in the set. Uh, it's black to move, and he has to live this time. It's a little bit different. So the answer <clears throat> is he needs to make two rooms. And this is a little more complicated because it doesn't feel like black can, right? If black tries to play here, white will play here. And just like that, black is left with one eye, and everything is gone, right? However, there's a trick. If black makes his first room here, white can't escape because he's putting his own group in Atari and then black can capture. And now black has an eye. And so those are the two eyes. Self Ataris are a hugely important tool to use in life and death. If you can make a situation such that your opponent can't fill in the point he needs to because he's just gonna put himself in Atari like this, that's a great uh, Tsuji or a great technique in life and death. Problem number three, black to move. So this one is a little bit different Black still needs to make two rooms, right? So how do you think he can best do this? Uh, we can see that if black tries the point we've been hitting for the past two problems, white will simply take the stone and now black doesn't have uh, two eyes anymore. But if black connects this stone, there's no way for white to take away um, black's ability to make two rooms. If white plays here, black will just capture. Two eyes, easy. If white plays here, black will capture. There's one eye, and then I'll capture that stone for the other one, no problem. So for this problem, uh, the correct move is actually to simply connect. Problem number four. Uh, the solution to this one is a little tricky. So you can imagine if black were to try to make the two rooms, you might think, oh, there you go, simple. White can't escape because of the trick in the second problem, black will capture, right? However, there's a slight difference that makes actually all the difference in the world is the fact that these are only two spaces where the previous problem had three. Because these are only two spaces, white would be able to use a technique very common in Go called the throw-in. The throw-in in this situation is the ability to force black to capture white stone and remove his eye. If white were to play here, black, I mean, that's Atari on the stone, right? So black has to take. And now this is a false eye. So now this will get captured eventually. Eventually white will fill this in and then he can capture the entire group. So what's the correct solution? Well, the correct solution is actually simply to close everything off because remember, white cannot fill this liberty because that's the only liberty his two stones have. If white fills it, all three of those stones get taken off the board. So white can't actually play anything. White can try to capture, but then black can just take both and make two eyes again. So it might seem at first like this was the right move, but in fact, 
this is good enough. White cannot fill that last liberty. Uh, number five, black to move and kill. So this one, probably most of you will get pretty easy. Obviously, there's really only two choices of black plays here. White will just capture everything in one move. So black is only option is to play here. But this is a great sacrificial technique and teaches you another key lesson about life and death is that if you can make your opponent capture your stones uh, in a dead shape, and there are many dead shapes, uh, you can kill it. So black is putting these white stones in Atari, white's like captured. However, there's only three spaces here. And this looks like a lot like the first problem. So white, black can play in the middle, keeping white from making two rooms. Black's turn, uh, black to kill. This uses a technique you learned, uh, I think a few problems ago. It was one of the reasons a certain move didn't work. Uh, if you remember that, this answer would be very easy. So the answer, obviously, is what move would white want to play? Well, white would love to get this move in because that will complete white's two eyes. But if black plays there, once again, it's Natari on e13. Black has to take, and now it's dead. Uh, there's no way white can save this stone. This is a false eye, and this is the only eye white has. And so the throw-in was the key. Uh, to Suji here to kill this group. All right, moving right along, problem number seven. So this is a tricky one. Um, if you don't know the technique, it's tricky. If you do know the technique, it's super easy. Now, what move would light white like to have? Uh, we know white would love to have this move that completes the two rooms. So what if black goes there? You might be thinking, well, that's kind of insane. But it's actually not. It's actually just our throw-in from the last problem with a different order. If black plays here, white goes here, black will make this false. And we have the exact same problem we had last time, uh, where white is dead. <clears throat> if white tries to surround it further, black will just connect and everything is fine. This is a pretty cool problem. It gives you a fundamental lesson in the minimum number of stones black needs in the corner uh, in a straight line to live. So it's black's move. If you're thinking this move, um, that is the incorrect answer. In fact, if you have a bunch of black stones near the corner, the key is you need five black stones next to the corner to live. Why? Because if white tries to limit the eye space, black simply connects up to the bait, to the top. And now there's four spaces. If you remember from that one problem where there were four spaces, black, there's no way for white to keep black from making two, two rooms. Black would need to play here and here, which he can't play two rooms in a row. So black would just, no matter what white decides to play, he would play the other one. These are Mii and uh, four spaces lives in the corner. If you chose this move, uh, then white has this Hane and now Black can't make a space in the corner anymore. He has to just try to keep extending, but white will block. And unfortunately, if he tries to make his two eyes, he's stuck with three again. And white can play in the middle. This is false. White can just connect. And that black group is dead. So extending along the side does not work, but because uh, extending along the corner gives black four spaces, eventually, that is the solution to the problem. Black's turn now. Uh, this is another pretty cool problem. Uh, so you see white almost has the four spaces that white needs in the corner. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the problem, there's death in the Hane, the proverb. Uh, that is exactly what we need in this situation. So if black will simply play here, white can't do anything. If white tries to block, he's left with three spaces. Black can play in the middle, death. I think there's problem 10 now, which is pretty cool. Uh, almost done. So uh, black to move. Now there's one move that makes a false eye and one move that makes uh, two real eyes. Uh, this is the correct move. Reason being, white can't play here. Like we said before, it will eliminate all of his liberties and white will just immediately die. White has to take and black can swallow that stone and make two rooms. If black plays here to take first, white can descend over this way, this way. And now black has only one real eye, because as we remember, this is false. White can take this stone anytime he wants. 
Okay, problem 11, uh, black to move. This is uh, essentially the throw-in technique that we learned before, except it's a little bit on steroids. So the key move for black, well, there's actually two ways to really do it. No, there's not. There's only one way. So what are we saying, right? White needs this move to make two rooms, correct? So black would kind of need to play there if he wants uh, white to die. Obviously, if white does this, black will make this eye false. And now black can take it. It's a false eye and white is dead. But the more interesting response is what if white does this? Well, like I said, it's a throw in, but we can escalate the throw in. What if black plays here? Now, if white takes, we have the same pattern of the single throw in again. Black can play here, take, false. Only one eye, white is dead. So if take it back. <clears throat> this actually works because black can make a double throw in leading into a single throw in. Problem 12. Okay, so the solution is uh, basically the cousin to last problem. Uh, it's this one. This creates the double throw in shape that we saw earlier. White defends or takes, black single throws in, and that is a false eye. White is now dead. All right, our last problem of the set. Uh, if black simply backs off here, white will just make two rooms, and that's just a failure of the problem. So black needs to keep pushing. And if you remember from the previous two problems, it's simply another variation of the throw in, except in a different order. So white needs to play here to keep black from escaping. If white doesn't, obviously this is just connected, and now there's no more uh, life and death problem. White plays here. Black keeps that false by disconnecting these two white stones. White takes, throw in, and dead. Easy as that. Uh, that's the first uh, 13 uh, out of what? I think there are 900 in this one. This will be really cool to go through. Um, so I hope you guys learned something, and I hope this can turn into a great regimen for people that have a hard time studying life and death. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Give it a like. Uh, make sure to follow and all that good stuff. Um, let me know if this is a good idea, and I'll keep putting my energy towards making transcribing these life and death solutions on YouTube for you guys. Um, great. I hope to hear from you. Uh, good luck in your games, and uh, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope you continue to learn a lot. Thank you.